No, you know what? I doubt it. Plug in a number between 0 and 1. Would you agree that those are the only places where we actually have a problem? So at 0 and 1. So anywhere between there, between 0 and 1, our signs are all going to be the same. True? So we're going to be either all positive or all negative. That's going to be interesting. So we're probably going to be in one of these situations, all up or all down. We don't have a separating point here. The critical number won't give us one, actually. That's just a slope. I misspoke earlier. Um, like five seconds ago. Keep track of that. The only time that happens. Kidding. <laughs> anyway. Uh, since we don't have a break between there, and that is our interval, these are all going to be either negative numbers or all going to be positive numbers. I'm guessing since when you, when you square fractions, they get smaller, that this is probably all going to be negative. Is that true? So I plugged in a number between here. Since these are asymptotes, and we got negative the whole way across, true? Whether you plug in 0.1 or 9.999, you're going to get all negative numbers. That means our asymptotes look like this. I can guarantee you right now that we're not going to have what? Minimum. Minimum. We're not going to have an absolute min. Why not? Because it goes to negative infinity, for sure. Even if one side went to negative infinity, it still wouldn't have an absolute min minimum. You okay? Which one will we have? Uh, Why? Because it comes to the point. It's going to come up, and it's going to go back down. That says well, on a continuous function, which this one is, in that interval, that's continuous. In that interval. That says I will have an absolute max there. How do we find it? That's where the first derivative comes in. So, right, do you understand this? This said, coming from zero, coming to zero from the right gave you negative infinity. Coming to one from the left gave you negative infinity. Negative infinity is way smaller than any number you can find, so that's there's, that means there's no absolute minimum. That's going to the same place, no absolute minimum. They don't have to go to the same place, okay? They go to positive infinity, but this just says that in both cases you're, you're not going to have an absolute minimum. Do you follow? If this one had magically gone to positive infinity, we'd have neither. If they'd both gone to positive infinity, we wouldn't have an absolute match, but we would have a min. You with me on that, the logic there? So find these first. That might be a great way to do it. Eliminate some of the, your, your problems, or eliminate uh, some of your choices. We're not going to have an absolute min. Now I want you to find the first derivative. There's a couple options. You can move that thing up top and make it negative 1. You can do a quotient rule. Hopefully you're able to find about the same thing. By the way, some of your, your negatives are, are nasty, all right? Uh, some of you are, are ruining some of your problems based on your negatives, especially distributing your negatives on your implicit differentiation. So when you get that homework back, I, it's already graded. I've looked at it, but I, this is too much to pass around in one day. There's a lot of it. Uh, so when you look at that, check out your, I, I've circled your negatives. So you're just not distributing negatives. Be careful on that stuff, like here. If you don't have that parenthesis, you put a negative up front without distributing, you're going to be wrong on that plus 1. Do you see what I'm talking about? You'll be wrong there. So here, this is definitely negative 2x plus 1 over x squared minus x squared. Show of hands, how many people will find that derivative? If you did the quotient rule, you'll get the same thing. You just have to distribute, okay? And you'll get negative 2x 
plus one. Did, did anyone do it that way? Push and pull? You got the same thing? Mm -hmm. Perfect. What do we do with our first derivative in order so that we find our critical numbers? What do you set it equal to? So do that. Set it equal to zero. Now, even though that looks really, really nasty, think about something. Just think. Where could this possibly be equal to zero? It's not where the denominator equals zero, because that, that's going to give you undefined points. In fact, that's just going to be zero and one again, isn't it? So the only place it could possibly be equal to zero is where the numerator equals zero. So when you're solving rational equations like this is, which you've done before, you just have to set the numerator equal to zero. And that, in this case, is very easy. Which, by the way, you remember when I had you do all the distribution on uh, quotient rule, and you're like, oh my gosh, do we really have to do that? Can we just leave it in parentheses? No, because you have to solve it. right? So you're going to have to distribute it anyway. So you may as well do that. You're going to get two at negative 2x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1, divide by negative 2, x is 1 half. Show of hands, how people feel okay on getting the x is 1 half. This row, are you guys okay on this? All right. Hey, x equals 1 half. Is that in our interval? Yes. You should check that, right? You should probably check that. Uh, so that's in our interval. That means with our interval, we are certainly, as, as I magically predicted, we're going to have a, a, some sort of a critical number there because we were, we're down here, we're down here. It's got to reach a peak at some point, at least one peak. How do you find that peak? Plug it in. Do I need to check my endpoints? No. Do I have any endpoints? No. We've already done that work first. <coughs> we know that our endpoints are not going to have any. This can keep going down forever. So all you got to do with this, since you know it's going down forever, you know for certain that is going to be an absolute max. It's continuous. This is negative infinity. That's negative infinity. It has to go up. It has to come down since it is continuous. So you just plug in one half. Whatever value that is, that's an absolute max. What'd you get? Anybody else get negative one fourth? Yes. You plug it into, well, not your derivative, right? That would just give you slope. Plug it into here. So is the absolute max one half or is the absolute max negative one fourth? Negative one fourth. Wait a second. It's one fourth on the bottom. Negative four. One. Negative four. Negative four. Negative four. Thanks, Scott. Because I, I was just taking the whatever. Dude. I was just plugging it into it's the. It's all good. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Reciprocated, yeah, you're going to get negative yeah, four. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. The absolute is the absolute max negative four or one half? It's negative four. It occurs at x equals negative one half. So at, oh, sorry, x equals one half. And that's your absolute maximum for that function. Can you do it? Yes. How many people feel okay with what we just talked about? <coughs> so I, our ideas are, if you don't, if you have one of these weird functions, man, and you can't plug in the endpoints, you're gonna, if you can't plug those in, if it's not a polynomial and you literally can't plug it in, do your sign analysis. You know they're going to be asymptotes, right? right. We've talked about that. So you know they're gonna be asymptotes. They're either gonna do this, this, or this. Right. They're going to do one of those things, like dance moves. <laughs> anyway, that's, what's, that's what's going to be. It's going to do this or this or this. Or, I'm so awesome on a dance floor, by the way. So cool. Not really. Not at all. I'll do my calculus dance. Um, so you, you know you're going to eliminate some of your choices here. So the, there won't be minimums and maximums in some cases. Then you find your derivative. Then you know what you have after that. Okay. If you, if you get a minus and a plus, then you're done. Yeah, you don't even have to do the derivative. <clears throat> you're done. Those are nice problems. Those won't happen very often, but those are nice problems. <laughs> Most of the time you're going to get this or that, otherwise the problem is kind of stupid, right? You know? <laughs> anyway. Do you have a good feeling about absolute maximum? If you have endpoints, you check endpoints and critical numbers. If you don't have endpoints, you check critical <coughs> numbers and you do one-sided limits of sign analysis. And that's, that's the basic goal.